Russia dreamed of a giant aircraft for seven years before the A380 came to the skies. The KR-860 could carry up to 1,000 passengers with 12 seats per row on the main deck with triple aisles, as well as 9-seat cabin upstairs. In 1999, a scale model was displayed at the Paris Air Show, but it was the last time the world saw the Russian behemoth. What do you think happened then? Do you think that the plane made it to the end? Make sure to stay tuned until the end to find out. Hey guys, welcome to another amazing video from Aviation News. Today in this video, we'll be talking about the Russian A380 and why it was never built and all the other tiny details. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to make sure you never miss any updates or videos from us. Now come, let's take a closer look. The A380 Super Jumbo aircraft was created by Airbus with the assumption that hub-to-hub -hub air travel was the way of the future. The future jet, according to the business, will be large capacity with accommodation for hundreds of people. Boeing, on the other hand, was a firm believer in point-to-point -point routes between destinations. As a result, the American manufacturer concentrated on smaller, more fuel-efficient planes like the 787 Streamliner. In terms of success, these models turned out to be completely different. Airbus was the loser in this fight, with the A380's manufacturing being officially halted in February 2019. There was, however, a third rival participating, albeit for a short time. Sukhoi's projected KR-860 was a massive Russian response to the A380, and it was the equivalent of going all-in on RAT. This aircraft carried the hub-to-hub -hub idea to its logical conclusion. The Sukhoi KR-860 was a four-engine, double-decker, wide-body aircraft that was unveiled during the 2001 Karis Air Show. In fact, the design is comparable to the Airbus A380, but the A380's planned capacity was substantially higher. The number 860 in its name relates to the number of passengers the massive aircraft was designed to transport. The A380's sport class layout, on the other hand, has a capacity of 469 people. Kirlia Rossi is the meaning of the KR in the aircraft's name. This translates to Russian wings in English. Sukhoi, a Russian aerospace company that also produces a variety of military fighter planes and the narrow-body SSJ-100 created it. Work on the design began in 1997. Although the plane was never built, a 124th scale model was created to demonstrate the concept. Initially, three options were proposed. A passenger version is also available. A freight variant is capable of carrying rail cars or cargo containers. This would eliminate the need to unpack modular shipping containers before delivery. A liquid gas version is used to carry oil field products. The liquid gas could have been utilized instead of jet fuel to power the plane, saving the airline money on the voyage. The following are the plant specs. 860 to 1,000 passengers can be accommodated. 80 meters in length or 262 feet 6 inches. Wingspan 88 meters or 288 feet 9 inches with wings spread out or 64 meters or 210 feet with wings folded. Wing area of 700 square meters or 7,500 square feet. 650,000 kilograms is a maximum takeoff weight or 1,433,005 pounds. Power plant 4 GE CF680E1A4 B turbofans, each with 320 kilonewton or 72,000 lbf thrust, or 4 Pratt & Whitney PW4168A turbofans, each with 305 kilonewtons or 69,000 lbf thrust. Cruising speed of 1,000 km per hour or 621 miles per hour or 540 kilonewton. Range of 15,000 km or 9,321 miles or 8,999 nmi. There was also the option of using Kuznetsov NK93 engines in addition to the specified GE or Pratt & Whitney engines, both of which were utilized on the Airbus A330. With eight engines and four pairs, this would have been the most cost-effective choice. The A380 has a maximum capacity of 550 passengers with an all-economy variant carrying up to 800. The KR860, on the other hand, significantly outperforms this. The plane was designed to carry 860 passengers or up to 1,000 in an all-economy configuration. To put things in perspective, the lower deck was designed with 12 abreast seating and three aisles in mind. This would have been a first in the history of commercial aviation. The upper deck was supposed to be set up in a more traditional way, with nine abreast seats and two aisles. The seating arrangement of the KR-860 was not the only innovative feature. The plane was equipped with three escalators incorporated into the hull to assist passengers in boarding and disembarking on time. Escalators were installed beneath the plane to quickly transport passengers from the ground to their assigned deck. The wings had to fold up to park safely at airport gates built for Boeing 747 airplanes 
Because the design had such a vast wingspan, such technology may look familiar, and the new Boeing 777-7X does, in fact, employ the same mechanism. However, unlike the KR-860, the degree of bending of this variety is not as great. Originally, the program estimated that there would be a demand for 300 planes. As we now know, Airbus only sold 290 A380s over its entire development, so a Russian-built Super A380 proposing to sell more is highly impossible. Russia, China, India, Vietnam, and Africa were all possible markets. Western countries were still apprehensive about Russian-made aircraft at the time, following the diplomatic consequences of the Cold War. As a result, they would have preferred Airbus or Boeing planes instead. In the year 2000, the program's cost was expected to be around $10 billion, and to help recover the costs, Sukhoi performed a joint venture with China and India. This made the Russian government wary of sponsoring an aircraft that would be of limited use in the country. As a result, in 2001, funds were transferred to other initiatives. Moreover, the Sonic Cruiser is the result of one of many unfinished research and development projects at Boeing that began in the 1990s with the purpose of examining prospective designs for a new near Sonic or supersonic airliner. The Sonic Cruiser made its public debut on March 29, 2001, just days after rival Airbus launched the A380. When there was not enough airline interest in Boeing's proposed 747X derivative, it was dropped from the competition with the A380 and the Sonic Cruiser was presented as an entirely different approach. A supersonic variant with four engines capable of cruising at Mach 1.5 to 3.0, various tail, engine placement, and inlet and outlet configurations, smaller supersonic and subsonic business jets, and what Boeing referred to as a modular system in which the cruise pace can be changed from supersonic to near sonic by an interchangeable nose, the Sonic Cruiser was a near sonic variant. Boeing's 2001 patent detailed the breadth of Delta. The origins may be traced back to 1995 when an internal airplane creation process strategy team was formed, and by fall 2000, they had created a plane code named Project Glacier that closely matched the original Sonic Cruiser drawings. Boeing CEO Alan Mulally began informally in advertising the concept to potential customers in early 2001, touting its greater speed and a similar efficiency to previous designs. Sir Richard Branson of Virgin Atlantic and Don Carty of American Airlines were publicly enthused about the Sonic Cruiser, with Branton expecting to place a provisional order for three to six aircraft in May 2001. The announcement on March 29, 2001 was followed by a larger media event on June 19, 2001 at the Paris Air Show, when futurist John Naisbet and Mulally complimented the concept, which was unveiled as a 140-scale model. While we can all agree that Russia and the rest of the world would never have used this aircraft, it would have been a sight to behold. Do you agree with this? Let's know in the comment section. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Aviation News, for more such exciting aviation content. See you in the next video. See you in the next.